You're now watching Sports Betters Paradise on the Bet Rivers Network. All right, Jimmy out again here with you every week on the Sports Betters Paradise YouTube channel with Paul Stone at Paul Stone Sports talking college football and things shake it up in the SEC. Ever seen a game, Paul, where at the end of the game, both coaches are fired? How about that? Winner and a loser. So that's what happened in College Station with uh, A&M in Mississippi State. So once A&M moved their, made their move, Starkville said, well, I mean, we just got beat by the team that they just fired their coach. What are we going to do? Totally different reasons between the two. So totally different ends of the spectrum, resource slash budget wise as well. But just a couple of notes on uh, them uh, making some changes uh, at Texas A&M Mississippi State. Yeah, starting with Mississippi State, obviously uh, Mississippi State was just put in a terrible, uh, tragic position with the uh, untimely passing of Mike Leach last December and Zach Arnett, uh, the defensive coordinator. Uh, it's kind of the convenient hire, you know, gets promoted from defensive coordinator. And uh, I guess they just recognized early on that maybe they, you know, clearly they didn't feel like he was the man for the job and that they were going to be able to uh, – you know, position their program going forward where they would like, uh, especially with Texas, Oklahoma coming into the conference. Um, you know, those two teams are obviously not going to to dominate the SEC. They might not ever even win the SEC, but they certainly make the landscape even more difficult for programs like Mississippi State. So you kind of got to up the ante, I think, uh, in places like Starkville. And then Jimbo Fisher, you know, obviously uh, hindsight will uh, show us uh, based on the reports that there was a Board of Regents meeting, I believe, on Thursday, two days before that Mississippi State uh, game. I think that, you know, they could have beat the Bulldogs 205 to nothing, and he would have still been fired uh, on Sunday. So uh, an interesting uh, situation here with uh, Jimbo Fisher's uh, ouster there, um, $76 million buyout. Uh, if you want me to, I can throw, you know, some some thoughts out on the job, or if you want to move into the selections, we can do that as well. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, a couple of names, Quick. yeah. Yeah, a couple of names at the top of the list. You know, I, I would say certainly Mike Elko, the former A&M defensive coordinator, spent the last two seasons there at Duke, uh, would be maybe the, the top candidate or close to it. A lot of people mentioning Lane Kiffin. I don't think Lane Kiffin's going to be going to College Station, just in my personal opinion. Don't think he's a good fit. Then Kalen DeBoer, the Washington coach, uh, mostly uh, a Pacific uh, West Coast kind of guy, so that might be a drawback. One long shot, he's going to come back to coaching at some point. Might it be Texas A&M making the move from the Fox studio to the sideline in College Station? Don't count out Urban Meyer. That's in our producer, Station. Max Gotro. That's his pick. So, we, you know, we will see uh, exactly what it is. Is the stain uh, uh, too much to overcome? And keep him on. Got to throw away that Jacksonville deal. That's that's NFL. That's a whole different league uh, than uh, than college football. Bowling Green, Utah, Florida, and Ohio State want big at all of those places. All right, let's get to the games. And a uh, considerable movement, Paul, uh, on your games at Bet Rivers right now. First of all, Northwestern, who was minus one and a half, is now plus one and a half at home against Purdue. Northwestern smoking Wisconsin right out the gates. Not even a contest uh, in Madison last week against the bruised up uh, Badgers. But, you know, after this, you talk about a coaching change and throwing in there, this guy's done a pretty good job of stabilizing their team, being more competitive than maybe a lot of people thought. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about David Braun. And David Braun, you know, kind of going back to just shortly after July 4th this summer, Pat Fitzgerald, uh, gets suspended and then uh, quickly terminated by Northwestern uh, following uh, an investigation into hazing allegations. David Braun had only been at Northwestern as an employee for six and a half months, so he had never coached a game at Northwestern. They appoint him as interim head coach. In fact, Braun, his entire career spent at the FCS and below level, he had never even coached as an assistant in an FBS game at any level. Uh, before taking the head coaching job in July. So the Wildcats have just responded, I think, tremendously. They're 5-5 five and five on the season, need either to defeat Purdue this week at home or defeat Illinois on the road Thanksgiving Saturday. The Wildcats have already, of course, they're the, the underdog at the present. It could, it could go back and forth, who knows. But the Wildcats, they impressively, they've won three games outright this season as the double-digit betting underdog. They've also won a fourth game at Pickham, 
Uh, so they've been uh, outperforming public expectations, you might say. Purdue, the reason maybe some of this money has showed on the Boilermakers, they're off a 49-30 victory over Minnesota. In that game, the Boilermakers gained 604 yards. So they're certainly more revved up than Northwestern. They have more weapons without question. But the Boilers, they're a disappointing 3-7 and seven on the season. They haven't won back-to-back -back games all season. I like the current trajectory of this Northwestern team. They've got some confidence. I think they defeat Purdue Saturday in uh, Evanston. Yeah, I was on them uh, in uh, Never a Sweat uh, on Saturday in that big win as double-digit dog, by the way, against Wisconsin. Get extra value this football season with Bet River Squares. Went up to $10,000 in bonus money. Bet $10 in same-game parlays on any game with the Squares icon to earn a square. Brought to you by our friends over at Bet Rivers. More line movement here, Paul, and this one uh, is considerable. Some shops opened up. Uh, Washington, a one or two point favorite. It went at Bet Rivers to Oregon State minus one this morning. It is up to minus two and a half. And Corvallis, as everybody thinks, this, this these Huskies are going to be ambushed at Oregon State. One last little jab attempt here for Oregon State for, against Washington on the way out to the Big Ten. Yeah, you know, sometimes I think as sports betters, and I, I'd be interested to, to know if you feel this way as well. But sometimes when everybody just loads up on one side, it does cause a little reason for pause. You kind of get a little bit concerned because it seems like everybody, people that don't even bet are probably betting Oregon State this week. So it seems like everybody's on the Beavers as we record here uh, on Tuesday of game week. But I just look at this game. First of all, do you think Research Stadium is going to be rocking Saturday night in Corvallis? Mm -hmm. I mean, not only uh, are the Huskies three games away from a spot in the college football, three victories away from a spot in the college football playoff. But Washington, they got a bright, new, shiny invitation to the Big Ten. They're leaving for greener pastures. In Oregon State, they get left standing at the altar. Nobody wants them. They've got, I think, three games scheduled in 2024. Uh, their season's kind of up in the air. They'll get a schedule, and they'll end up somewhere. But they have to have a big chip on their shoulder. So they're going to be loaded for uh, Huskies. Come Saturday, their first-year starting quarterback, D.J. Uyangale, uh, he has thrived in Corvallis after transfer, uh, transferring from Clemson. He's averaged a little over nine yards per pass attempt. Uh, he has a solid 20-4 to touchdown-to-interception ratio. And a guy at running back that nobody really talks about, and he's one of the very best in all of college football, Damian Martinez, a guy from down the road from me in Louisville, Texas, outside of Dallas. He was a three-star recruit. Very few Power Five teams offered him. Texas State was one of his his offers. Six foot two thirty. The guy's built like a running back. He's already gained over two thousand yards in his career in just twenty three games. Big time back. You look at Oregon State at Research Stadium since the start of the twenty twenty one season. Seventeen and one straight up. You look at this Washington team. They've kind of been reeling a little bit in recent weeks. Been, uh, you know, they haven't looked like they did the, those first, you know, four or so games of the season. It's mid-November. I think it's time for a little confusion, a little chaos in the college football playoff race. And I think it starts Saturday night at Research Stadium, Oregon State by a field goal or more over the Huskies. I think Washington's final path has everything to do with Bo Nix now being the favorite to the Heisman ahead of Penix. Because, you know, when your team loses, you get hurt. Jaden Daniels has clearly had the best season this year, but three losses has put them as third choice, as him at third choice right now. But not just Oregon State on the way out of the big uh, Pac-12. Well, who do they play next week? Well, Washington State, the other stepchild of the Pac-12. They get a, a swipe at them, and then they may have to have a rematch against Oregon. That's three very difficult games uh, on the way out for the Washington uh, Huskies. So, Martinez, no surprise to us on the Pac-12 preview for our Bet Rivers Conference previews. We said, no, this is the best running game in the Pac-12. No, he behind that offensive line. Jonathan Smith did a good job. I was a little slow to warm up to DJU, but he has gotten better because the running game was so good. He was having easy throws, not being touched, uh, untouched in the pocket, but – 
He has got better. Nine yards an attempt. That's nothing to, that's nothing to uh, just uh, d- discount for sure. All right, uh, let's go to back to the, uh, the Big 12 here. And Iowa State catching Texas. More line movements here. This is the slightest of the line moves for your selections, Paul. This one only went from plus eight to plus seven and a half. Cyclones hosting Texas. You tell me. The trade-off, getting the quarterback back but losing the running back. How does that weigh for Texas moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I, I think certainly uh, they can – not that Jonathan Brooks is e- easily replaced by C.J. Baxter and company, but but I think certainly getting Quinn Ewers back, uh, you know, based on Malik Murphy just not quite ready to play. You know, I, I talk about it all the time. Spring football is not real football. The Texas yeah. fans were posting, look at these nine throws from the spring game. Well, nobody can rush you in the spring game. You don't have any pressure. There's no duress. And a quarterback is what they are under duress. And if you're playing spring football without duress, then you're really not playing football. So I could go on and on. And on. But I think it's a little bit uh, more of a positive trade-off for, for Texas, but not much because Jonathan Brooks has been really, really solid, one of the best running backs in all of college football this year, kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, I believe it's fair to say overall Texas has been mostly um, – treading water for the last month or so. They've been blowing big leads, hanging on for dear life, looking mostly mortal. Uh, Now they have to go into a hostile environment on a November Saturday night in Ames, Iowa, against a team, frankly, that's had its number the past several years, and certainly a team uh, that would like to deliver a parting blow as the Longhorns depart for the SEC after this season. Uh, they're going to have to do it again without, you know, arguably their their top offensive weapon in running back Jonathan Brooks, who tore an ACL in the second half of the uh, victory over TCU in Fort Worth Saturday night. Brooks, not only a big-time guy uh, in the running game, gained over 1,100 yards this year, but he's a big-time weapon out of the passing game. He's caught about 25 balls this year, some big plays uh, out of the backfield catching the ball. That's not easily replaced as well. You look at uh, Iowa State, they've defeated Texas three of the last four years. Uh, They're at their best as a home underdog under Matt Campbell during his nine-year tenure there. 11-5 and against the spread as a home underdog at Jack Trice Stadium. Uh, Again, playing in in Ames has been tricky for Texas in the past. The temperature likely to dip into the 30s Saturday night. And the Longhorns, they just recently haven't, again, been able to land that knockout punch The seven and a half points, too attractive to pass up. Iowa State plus seven and a half over Texas. All right, let's move on to your final pick at four for us this weekend. Let's go to uh, Western Kentucky and Sam Houston. Hilltoppers here, 13 point favorites over Sam Houston. Yeah, you know, first of all, looking at Sam Houston in its first season as an FBS member, uh, former FCS power, Sam Houston State, they started the season 0 and 8. Had a lot of close calls, but just couldn't get any victories. 0-8 before winning their last two games, uh, those being a 24-21 win over soon-to-be FBS member Kennesaw State uh, two weeks ago. And then this past week, defeat Louisiana Tech 42-27 as a a 7.5-point road underdog. And I think with uh, winning, often comes confidence. So I think the Bearcats certainly feeling better about themselves today than they were a couple of weeks ago. Meanwhile, Western Kentucky, they have inarguably been one of the biggest disappointments among non-Power 5 schools of any school in the country, really one of the biggest disappointments uh, in the country, period. If you weigh all teams equally, they were returning uh, a really talented, productive quarterback in Austin Reed, had some questions on defense, but on paper really looked to have uh, an explosive offense with wide receiver Malachi Corley back as well but it just hadn't uh, come to fruition. You know, they were the overwhelming choice to win Conference USA. And then after losing at home to to New Mexico State this past Saturday, lost to the Aggies uh, 38-29 after going ahead 14-0. After that loss, Western Kentucky now eliminated from Conference USA consideration. They're 5-5 on the season, 3-3 in conference play. It's certainly not what the uh, Hilltoppers envisioned entering the 2023 season. To me, it just looks like a classic letdown spot for Western Kentucky, laying double digits. They hadn't met their expectations, going through the motions. Sam Houston on an upward trend, 
coming off of a, a couple of victories, playing pretty good defense overall, take 13 points in Sam Houston over Western Kentucky. And, and Sam Houston was so close. They were winless on the season, blew a lead against Florida International, blew a lead, a double-digit lead against UTEP, and then finally they get over the hump with a couple of victories. So this whole winning thing is fresh and new. Uh, for uh, Sam Houston State. And correct me if I'm wrong, Paul, but Reed opted out of the New Orleans Bowl, then played, lit it up against a 10-win South Alabama team. And so he's coming back, and they thought he was long gone. And it made they, they, just much less than what they expected this year, as you, as you pointed to earlier. And I'll add a piece, too, and I, I think this is right. I'm saying this off my head. Not only he opted out, decided to play, played, then he went into the transfer portal in all season. He went into the transfer portal, was in there for a couple of weeks. I guess he kind of just danced around. They maybe came up with some more money. I'm not sure what happened there in uh, Bowling Green, but uh, he ends up uh, coming out of the transfer portal, deciding to uh, stay there at Western Kentucky. So, uh, you know, again, they only had, I think, four returning defensive starters, but offense is their uh, calling card. And, you right. know, you just look at it on paper and you – you see seven or eight starters back. You see that quarterback back. You see a 1,000-yard receiver in Malachi Corley also returning. And you just think they're going to average, you know, 38 points a game again and that they're going to uh, clean up that conference, which is not a very strong conference. But they're just a uh, – they're a middling team in, in Conference USA. And, and that's why we play the games. I mean, we can look at it and think that a team's going to go one way or the other. But until they start actually uh, – matching up against opponents, and we start getting results, you never know what's going to come out. Yeah, Corley's a, a really good player, but uh, just looks like uh, he's uh, kind of, uh, kind of uh, done that maybe a whole lot of balance to uh, free him up uh, the way they would like. So, I mean, you know, Jacksonville State, they lost a lead down there in Alabama and then got beat double digits at home and against Liberty, the top team in that uh, conference this year. All right, four picks for you this week, each and every week with Paul Stone here on the Sports Better's Paradise YouTube channel. For Paul Stone, I'm Jimmy Ott here on the Bet Rivers YouTube channel.